you guys. So we just finished our trek from ABC. No, well, yeah, the Annapurna Circuit, Annapurna Base Camp, and we are gonna go through everything that we brought and everything we needed and everything we should have brought and everything we don't need. And Chris and I are just gonna, we're just gonna pick shit that we brought, just take it out of our bag randomly and tell you guys how we thought it helped us, how it didn't help us, what we needed instead, etc. It's really hot in here too, so we're gonna try to do this really quick. Item one, external speaker. Technically not necessary, but kind of nice to have on the trail if you like music. Uh, this here is the Buckshot uh, 2.0 by Outdoor Research. Uh, lasts about 20 hours. Okay, you don't have to, okay, sound. okay, you're not like, you're not an advertiser for them, you know? <laughs> I'm not like trying to make money and just letting people know like this is a good speaker. Yeah, it's a really good speaker. It's a good speaker. Okay. Flip flops. Something to let your feet breathe when you're not trekking and you're at your uh, tea house. Essential. I brought sandals. They kind of work the same. Make sure they're comfortable. My fake Katmandu jacket. My puppy jacket. It worked like a charm. It's really fucking warm. I loved wearing it. It only cost me 25 bucks. He's got a real Patagonia. You absolutely need one. Oh, also, we need to clarify that what we're telling you guys is what you should bring in the month of October from our experience. Okay, every month is different depending on winter spring all that it's the dry season. There's very little snow So this is just in October bring a day pack We ended up doing Pune Hill and luckily I had just bought this thing as a gift Unfortunately, this is Nepali quality and broke so just bring something small for a little day pack for little side trips. Sleeping bag. My sleeping bag got here in Kathmandu. Worked out amazingly. It was super warm. I got a negative 10 degree survival temperature and I'm going to use it for a very long time. I think it's really good quality. Uh, we have a difference of opinion when it comes to bringing a sleeping bag. I think it's absolutely essential at any time of the year to bring a sleeping bag because even though the tea houses all offer blankets, they're all quite dirty. They're actually really dirty. It's kind of disgusting, like they never wash them. So essentially you don't need one, but if you want to feel somewhat clean at night and warm and comfortable, I would highly recommend you bring one. Let's see if I have something to add to that. The other option is you can get sleeping bag liners that pack very small. This is what it packs into. It's basically just like cotton sheet sleeping bag. It's super comfortable. You just slip in that, put the blanket that they provide over you, and you're good to go. So if you really want to shave weight, there is this option. External battery. I got a wee guy. He's got a big guy. I've got a fucking fat heavy one. That's if you bring a lot of camera gear. If you just have a phone, just bring a little wee guy that maybe charges two or three two times. times. Yeah, that's all you need. Socks. Bring lots of socks. Shit, shit ton of socks. You need a lot of socks. Merino wool is good because they don't smell as bad. You don't have to wash them as often. Rain cover for your backpack. You gotta have one. It rains, you guys. A camera. You need a camera. Your phone camera works fine, but you should bring a legit good camera. You can zoom in. Bring on a zoomy guy so you can really get up there and get the peaks. He has to steal all of my photos that I got of really close up on the peaks because his phone camera doesn't allow him to get that close up. Real good zoomy camera. Sunglasses. A pair that makes you look like a douche is uh, what I went for. Day clothes and night clothes. I only brought two pairs of pants or like one pair of long trekking pants with the zip off legs and just a pair of shorts. I pretty much, aside for at night, wore my trekking pants every single day without washing them. That's simply to save weight. Yeah. I have nothing to add. Yeah. Well said. Deodorant. I would highly recommend you bring cologne. We didn't bring cologne or no. sprays. No. We, we definitely needed cologne. Whenever we would walk by somebody who had brought <laughs> cologne, it was like, it was like smelling a fresh pie in a windowsill and just like, the smell goes up your nose and you're just like, <laughs> You're just like, come back here, pretty lady. Yeah. Bring cologne. You need it. Gloves, hat, and face mask. I brought fairly thin gloves, just liners. There were very few times where Same. I felt like I could have really used more. Again, for the time of year that we went, we weren't really dealing with very, very cold weather, so. These are okay in October. These are okay. First aid kit. Definitely bring a first aid kit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should have things like Imodium if you, you know, get you got some poisoning. Diarrhea. Um, your altitude sickness pills. Yep. Face wipes. Definitely bring face wipes. Yeah. Nice little face wash. 
every morning. As well as hand sanitizer. A yeah. lot of, for a lot of people, that's habitual. But. Band aids. We've got some allergy medication. We've got some tape. Iodine. And if you don't like the uh, iodine tablets or any of those type of water purifiers, okay. these water filters, the they work really well these days. It's kind of a pain in the butt to like fill this pouch and then put into your thing, but totally worth it. Not the even water that bad. tastes good, and you'll end up saving a lot of money on bottled water as well as the planet. A universal adapter, obviously. Rain jacket. Rain jacket. Rain jacket. Preferably one that gets really nice and small and compact and yeah, just another layer. All about layers. Space layer thermal, puffy jacket, rain jacket. You're good to go. Toiletries, right? You know, toothpaste. Toothbrush, body wash, shampoo, conditioner, you need it. Quick drying towel, microfiber. The one that I have is really nice and soft. Doesn't dry quite as fast as the one that Ryan has, but I have the same type of one back home and it feels like ripe wiping rubber on your face when you get out of the shower. It's not fantastic in my opinion. Owie. But uh, it dries quick. Yep. Solar panel. Not entirely necessary. Just about everywhere we went, there was power. We started kind of using it at the end, but really, really didn't need to. It is just kind of extra weight that I was carrying around for no reason. So for this track in particular, don't bother. Well, you just don't need, you don't need a solar panel and an external battery. You just yeah. choose one or the other, really. Yeah, base layers. Uh, so I just wore this one pair of Long John base layers the whole time. I did bring a whole nother set of both top and bottoms, and I just never needed it. I never needed to layer up that much. Just one layer. If I got too cold, I would do thermal pants and then just my regular pants. Yep. And you're okay. Everyone told us to bring snow pants, but uh, there's no snow, at least in the month of October. We've seen photos in April, and there's it's just covered with snow. So maybe October, if you'd rather be safe than sorry, sure, you bring snow pants, but in our experience, like you don't need them. And, you know, I will say that last year, what, 47 people died this time of year going over the past, so... Unexpected blizzard. Unexpected blizzard. But, you know, if really there too. is a blizzard, like, be smart and stay in your guest house and wait a day before you go over the past. Um, otherwise, these were, like, these are snowboard pants. These are heavy and a complete waste of space. Underwear. You don't want sweaty, drippy balls. Bring underwear. Yeah, non-cotton. Non-cotton is key ooh, ooh, for ooh. a lot of clothing. Everything. I only brought cotton. Don't bring cotton. Huge mistake. The biggest mistake that I made. Yeah. Um, it's bad. All of my socks were merino wool. They dry quick. If I even just didn't wash them and just hung them out for a couple days, they wouldn't smell bad anymore. Like, they just don't attract the odors as bad as cotton does, um, so... Some of the stains that I had, too. Yeah, man. like, I'm a firm believer in merino wool now. It's expensive, but it's worth it. We got trekking poles. Well, I have trekking poles. Chris lost his trekking poles, but... <sighs> you need them, you guys. Honestly, you want to save your knees. Like, it's just an amazing... It's an amazing purchase. I think every single trek for the rest of my life, I'll use trekking poles. And the biggest advice I can give to you when you're about to buy them is buy the ones with cork grip because if you buy the ones with like plastic or metal, you're gonna get really, really sweaty and then you're gonna wanna, you're just gonna be slipping all over, you're not gonna... <laughs> <laughs> Is this yours? What? Yeah, it's mine. It was in my laundry. Passport. Deck of cards. Or book or yes. something to keep your mind from um, going insane. Trekking permits. On a permit conservation and protection. Yeah. You need your ACAP and the Tims. Water bottle of your own, bring that for your filter. Whatever kind of setup you get. You're gonna need a map. These maps are so handy. You can't really do the trek without it. And plus, it's really it's really nice to know your distances and to plan out in advance. These maps are so handy and they're like two bucks. So it's totally worth it. You're gonna need light. Headlamp, he's got one too. Yeah. You, you need it. I think the same thing. I've also got two batteries for my cameras. I've got a GoPro, I've got this camera, I've got, okay, I'm not saying you need to bring all this, but I have like a computer and a drone and stuff, but I'm, we're not gonna cover that. We're just covering the basics for what an average uh, trekker would bring. <laughs> uh, I brought actual boots with ankle support, which I found to be really nice, being that I'm prone to rolling my ankles. So those were a huge help. I also see a lot of people walking in, in sandals like these. Now they strap to your feet solidly, they have really good grip, and your feet won't smell as bad. And I brought, my backpack is a Baltoro 75 liter Gregory. It's a Gregory backpack. Works great. Love everything about it. I got the uh, Osprey Ether 70 liter. I didn't quite like it at first, but I've really grown to like this pack. What, what did we want to say we, we needed? Uh... 
So things that we needed that we didn't bring, body spray and a day pack day pack maybe something like a little hamper to wash your clothes in we have a friend that had one and it's got like these little balls on the inside and you just kind of put some water in with your clothes and you can wash your clothes really handy yeah we really wish we had that you need toilet paper oh definitely bring toilet paper you can buy it in many of the places along everywhere the way, though. you can buy it everywhere yeah so things we didn't need snow pants they were Don't just need. not necessary for this time of year to be prepared maybe you should have them but we didn't need them Solar panel, and didn't need that really. This really good uh, insect repellent. Ah! There weren't, weren't really any bugs at all. At all. Oh, uh, should we talk about like how far and shit we went? Oh boy, hey, so I saved that stuff on the phone. You saved all of that? I did. That's, uh, that's a wrap on, look at it, this is sitting on a trash can. It's kind of gross, it's on my bed. Look at this mess that we made too, Jesus Christ. Oh, you're picking that up, mate. That's your shit. So that's a little basic overview of what we brought, what we don't need, what we did need. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm sure a lot of you don't care. Let's talk about the cool stuff about the trek, and that is, okay, how far did we go? Okay, we did, hold on. Okay, we did the Annapurna Circuit, to Poon Hill, to Licho Lake, and, and Annapurna Base Camp. And we did cut out a few sections. We did take a bus from Johnson down to uh, Gorapani. Yeah. Uh, which is a fairly large section. That was a six hour bus ride. But we cool. still ended up going a total distance of... 310 kilometers. Which is about 190 miles. Ooh, what the fuck? Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's pretty awesome. What you looked up online, <laughs> that on the circuit itself, not counting base camp, that's 45,000 feet of elevation gain. So that's like, you know, throughout the whole trek, yeah, you're going from what, 700 meters up to 54, but there's ups and downs yeah. the whole way. 45,000 feet. We almost climbed higher than two Everests. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we don't know how accurate this is, but the Annapurna Base Camp Trek is basically stairs the whole way. It's fairly easy. It's not really technical trail. I think that's hard. Stairs are hard. They can be hard. Yeah. From what we found, that is potentially 1.5 million steps. It doesn't seem that far off. Like, I mean, I wasn't counting, obviously, but it was a lot. Okay, the camera just died. Just up and down the whole way, just stairs, stairs, stairs. Ridiculous. And then we did our biggest day on ABC. We went 37 kilometers in one day, straight down. That was brutal. I think my favorite part of the trek was ABC. It's, it's so beautiful. And we've seen photos of it in the winter and it looks even better. So maybe in April would be an awesome time to do ABC and you'd actually be trekking in snow, make it a little bit more interesting. In which case, bring the snow pants. In which case, bring the snow pants. The circuit, you still get all those peaks and everything, and you get a lot more vast array of, of climate changes, which is also very interesting. I, I would do ABC just for the views, just to get there. You could do it really quick and for the views, but I would do the circuit for the incredible journey. And to get to that highest point, and I'd do Talicha Lake again. Talicha Lake was, ABC was probably my the best, and Talicha Lake was probably my second best, my second favorite. Would you agree? Yeah. He would, he would agree. Talicho was amazing. It's definitely super, super worth it. There was a lot of people that skipped it for whatever reason this time. Idiots. Don't skip it. Don't skip it. Literally, if you are short on time, do Talicho Lake and then take a bus down from Johnson. Yeah. Just bypass that other part, which we still hear is amazing, which we did miss out on to do ABC, but... Yeah, I don't recommend you take the bus. It's a shitty fucking... It's a death bus. It's a horrible bus ride. But if you're short on time, absolutely. But... That being said, um, make sure you have the time to do this. That's something that I'd say that I kind of wish that I had done a little bit differently is, you know, really giving myself a lot of extra time to do this whole trek. You know, we got excited at the beginning, thinking, oh yeah, let's go do ABC, and we thought that we were going to have time, but we didn't, and then we, you know, had hiccups along the way with food poisoning, and it just took us longer to get places, and so to then still do ABC, we had to skip part of the trail. It took us 21 days to do all of that with skipping at least a three-day portion and taking a three-day break. So, give yourself four weeks if you want to do it all. Yeah, it's good advice. Say goodbye to Chris. This is the last you see of him. You give a kiss to the camera? Just on the, the lens? Do we have to be weird? They loved you, I think. I think everyone's going to love you. <laughs> oh, that's that's like one of those awkward first kisses. Dude, I'm gonna miss you.
Yeah, buddy. Let's link fingers to show our love. Come out, oh, internal temp high. Allow it to cool. We gotta do it again. <laughs> yes. I'm gonna miss you, bud. This is weird. <laughs> we gotta pick up this shit because we gotta go to Katmandu in the morning. What? Did you just fat? Yeah. As you fatted? Nice. All right, I'm leaving. I am leaving. <laughs> Goodbye, guys. I'll see you tomorrow in Australia. Goodbye, Chris. Bye, guys. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.